Buckle up, because when love meets reality TV, nothing is what it seems. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top five surprising facts about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at some lesser-known facts related to The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. The drama. You want to go outside? Let's go, because you're a coward. The heartbreak. They just want to find somebody that loves me. Number five. Contestants are cut off from the world. I get it. I am blessed with eloquence, and I'm articulate, and I use a lot of big words because I'm smart. Contestants on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette have to respect some odd rules. For instance, they are not allowed to use cell phones or the internet during the duration of the shoot. Her strategy today may be solely to drive me insane. Allegedly, this is done to ensure that the contestants are not distracted by the outside world and thus more focused on falling in love. Practically, though, it helps avoid spoilers or leaks. The restrictions don't end there, though. Access to movies, television, even music are often severely restricted. In some seasons, contestants have reported being told they couldn't bring books. It would seem that the producers are seriously committed to keeping distractions to a minimum. The only entertainment is competition. Number four, contestants undergo psychological evaluations. Hi, Nick. Wow, Hi. you look amazing. I'm Alexis. Alexis. I can't really see you. <laughs> Where did you find this? Consider this. Contestants on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette are asked to compete against 25 others for the affection of one person. Even under ideal conditions, this is a scenario one can't really prepare for. Facade. P-H-Y-S-D-E? Ding, 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 ding. Ah. As such, each contestant must complete a rigorous screening to determine whether or not they will be able to handle the stress of being on the show, among other things. This process requires them to spend a weekend in a hotel room, where they are interviewed and asked to fill out questionnaires allegedly containing over 1,000 questions. They then meet with a private investigator, a psychologist, and are eventually asked to give blood and urine samples. Talk about serious vetting. And you're gonna sit here and you're gonna try and make me look like a bitch. You, Chris Harrison, come at me. Number three, contestants don't eat during one-on-one -on -one dates. It's the best day ever. Oh, just, I mean, just simple and sweet. It, just, oh my God. Drops my, that's it. Ah yes, the one-on-one -on -one date. The ultimate way for The Bachelor or Bachelorette to show which contestants they are leaning towards. It usually involves an extravagant activity, followed by a candlelit dinner where gourmet food is served. And never eaten. I know there's a rose here on the table. So to tonight mm -hmm. and to our future, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. If you don't believe us, go back and check it out for yourself. A shot of food will almost always be included, but the people on the date never touch it. Why, you ask? Because eating on camera can be ugly. Not to mention the fact that every lip-smackingly disgusting sound is picked up by the microphones. Instead, producers allow those on the date to eat at a hotel before shooting begins. Ah, the magic of television. Number two, rose ceremonies last for hours. Vanessa. Vanessa, will you accept this rose? Absolutely. The rose ceremony has become one of The Bachelor franchise's most enduring images. A man or woman standing alone with a single rose in hand. As viewers from around the world wait to see who he or she will choose. I'm like angry. I hate this. I'm just trying to hold my together. Corinne. Little do they know that the rose ceremony is pretty much an all-night affair. Especially the first ones. You see numerous cameras are used during the shooting of the rose ceremony and each one needs to be repositioned after a contestant's name is called. Add it all up, and you have a process that can sometimes last until 4 a.m. I'm just standing here, and I'm thinking, just say Josephine, just say Josephine, just say Josephine. Josephine. Number one, contestants bring their own clothes. I am not happy that I am one of 15 wearing a red dress. It's embarrassing. With a few exceptions, Contestants are, for the most part, responsible for providing their own clothing. They receive a loot bag upon entering the mansion, but they can't count on it. I love the lines. It gives, like, 
you know, curves, and I think this is the winner. I think I might be wearing this one. Given that they need to look their best each and every day, many contestants spend a small fortune on their wardrobe beforehand. This fend-for-yourself policy also extends to hair and makeup. The only time contestants will have their hair and makeup done professionally is prior to their introduction and, should they make it that far, the finale. Of course, The Bachelor and Bachelorette are given access to the best clothes and provided with a stylist, ensuring they look incredible at all times. You are spectacular. <laughs> Thank you. This is one of my faves. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.